Now, this one is <coughs> a place of Mahalakshmi, Mahalakshmi principle. Because you know that Lakshmi principle is the power of Sri Vishnu, which is first establishes within us where we start paying attention to dharmic material life, <coughs> dharmic financial life, and dharmic family life. After that, seeking starts, seeking into higher realms there, It is manifested by the Mahalakshmi principle within us. That's why in affluent country people start seeking. They may go wrong, that's different. In a person this exists, but the manifestation starts when you are completely satisfied with your material side, not with Sahaja Yoga. In Sahaja Yoga it manifests and acts. So the central part of Mahalakshmi starts opening up. So rises above your Nabi Chakra above and goes up to your Sahasrara and pierces through. In the Sahasrara also it is the Vishnu Tattva becomes the Virat. There is only one principle. Manifests itself in the Sahasrara and you become aware of collective consciousness. You become knowledgeable and you know the truth. Is through the rising of the Kundalini. Now here they are only praising the middle part. That's the Mahalak. So here you are singing me to me to the Mahalakshmi principle of mind. But when it reaches the Sahasrara, in Sahasrara it becomes the Mahamaya, which I told you yesterday. In the Sahasrara, it gets the power of the Mahamaya by which it has thousand facets and it puts you into illusion to test you and to help you. In the Sahasrara, but otherwise, it has incarnated many a times. Like we can say the Lakshmi has incarnated on this earth as Sita, as Radha, as Mary, the mother of Christ, and ultimately as your mother. But that's only the central path and the only one principle of Mahalakshmi. So now here you are praising me as Mahalakshmi. So first they say, Oh Mahalakshmi, that's Mother, we praise you as Mahamaya, is the one who creates this illusion of the world. And you are the one who takes us out of this illusion. And you are the Pitha, is the seat, or the seat of the Sri Chakra, and all the gods worship you. Sri Pithe Sura Pujyate Pujyate Shankha Chakra Gada Haste Because it's a Lakshmi, you see, is the power of Vishnu. He has Shankha, that is the conch, the chakra, and the Gada in the hand. So, 
निर्मला देवी नमोस्त थे महालक्ष्मी नमोस्त थे नाउ अगेन श्री विष्णु इज ऑन द कंडोर ऑन द गरुड़ा सो नमस्ते गरुड़ा रूहे यू आर द वन हु इज गोइंग ऑन द गरुड़ा इट्स सो साइंटिफिक शी इज द पावर ऑफ विष्णु ऑफ लक्ष्मी लक्ष्मी ऑफ नारायण ऑफ विराटा द सेंट्रल पाथ हाउ नाइसली सो शी हैज ऑल द वेपन्स ऑफ श्री विष्णु शी राइट ऑन द गरुड़ा कोल्हासुर भयंकर शी इज द वन हु किल्ड कोल्हासुरा कोल्हासुरा इज द वन हु वॉज रिसाइडिंग इन कोल्हापुर शी किल देर एंड देर शी अपियर मैनिफेस्टेड इन द टेम्पल दैट्स वाई इन कोल्हापुर यू हैव गॉट महालक्ष्मी टेम्पल आई सर्व पाप हरे दे यू आर द वन हु टेक अवे ऑल अवर से रिमूव ऑल अवर से महालक्ष्मी नमस्ते दे सर्वज्ञ सर्व बर दे बिकॉज लक्ष्मी प्रिंसिपल बिकम्स महालक्ष्मी बिकम्स देन द विराट आंगना इज द पावर ऑफ द विराट आई इज द सेम यू नो एवरीथिंग बिकॉज इट इज नॉलेज it is the truth that's the principle of truth knowledge so she is the one who knows everything sarvagye sarva varade you are the one who gives all the blessings it is the mahalakshmi who gives you the blessings sarva dushta bhayankari and you are the one who is a terrible personality for all those who are cruel remember that who are cruel people sarva dukha hare devi you are the one who take away all the pains of the people also the name of shri vishnu is dhanvantari meaning the doctor one of the names that means the vishnu principle has got the power to cure to give you relief from pain through that power you take away all our pain it's true isn't it sarva dukha hare devi mahalakshmi namaste siddhi buddhi pradayini devi prada prade devi you are the one who is the giver of siddhis now you got siddhis you can raise kundalini you can cure people you can know everything on your central nervous system are the siddhis by which you know absolute knowledge you are the one who gives absolute knowledge through the central path of mahalakshmi you get to know of the absolute knowledge you are the giver of siddhis and buddhi you are the one who gives us the wisdom buddhi is the intelligence is the pure intelligence pure intelligence comes from the central path is just see how they are described so uh, you will be amazed that if you sing the song of say shri krishna or of shri rama or of shri vishnu or of mahalakshmi or of lakshmi they will have the same qualities described because they are one personality If you have their names, they never intermingle. Shiva will have his own qualities, Vishnu will have his own qualities, and Brahma will have his own qualities. They will not intermingle. They are all separated. So now here, what is the other quality? Is that in the middle madhyanta in the middle of the portion in between the time in the interval part you are the one who becomes in the heart the power of shiva you know that see how clearly it is said 
that in between you become the power of Shiva. And the one who is the power of Maheshwara is the Shiva. If the same middle path becomes. Yoga de yoga, yoga sambhute. You are the one who makes it possible to get yoga. You make us in such a way. Sambhute means, sambhut means you can make situation in such a way that we can get our realization, yoga. Not only that, but you give realization. Is the Mahalakshmi part of it. You can become extremely subtle and ex- extremely gross. So you can talk of very, very subtle things and you can move into human beings, into everything in a very subtle manner and you can also have a very gross appearance, a gross behavior, a gross method to handle the gross people. I use that, you know that. Stula Sukshma Maharudri. Now you are gross as well as you are very subtle and you are the greatest destructive power, Maharudri. Raudra is the power of Shiva which is destructive, but you are the one who is the Maharaudri. You have the power, the highest power of destruction, the greatest power of destruction, Maharaudri, Mahashakti Mahodari. You have a big stomach and in that you contain all the powers, the great powers within your stomach, Maharaudri, Mahodari. Mahapapa Hare Devi, you are the one who removes all our sins, Papa is, and that is the one we worship. Padmasana Sthite Devi, you sit in the lotus, you are sitting in the lotus, you will find Lakshmi always standing in the lotus, but Mahalakshmi sits on the lotus. You must have seen in the temple of Kolapur there are very, very big lotuses they give. If they grow there. They do not grow anywhere else but there only. Such big, big lotuses. Even in the Himalayas you won't find them, but at Mahalakshmi temple. See how it's all being done. What you describe, you get the proof of it. Now they describe, supposing the flowers that are like, say, by Mahakali. So if you go to Abu, where there is the Ambas, Ambas this thing, you will find the same flowers that are Champakas and all those are more there. Then a kind of a fragrance she likes out of a glue called as Gugul. That described also about her. And that's the place you find it, nowhere else. How the Mother Earth is also keeping those limitations and those compartments meant for different, different goddesses. So she sits on the lotus stick. She sits there and she establishes herself there. Also it means that she sits on your lotuses of your chakras and she establishes your lotuses. So throughout, in all the centers here, it is the Mahalakshmi power in different form and manifestations works out the opening of the chakra. Even here, when she becomes Madhyantar in the middle, in the little interval, she becomes, at that time, the power of Shiva, it is Mahalakshmi. So the principle is the same of Mahalakshmi. What is the principle of Mahalakshmi? Is the ascent. She helps the ascent of the Kundalini. Because when the Kundalini rises, there are so many things to be done to keep the Kundalini moving upward, not to make her fall down, to make open different chakras at different types, and what you call the bandhas are the to keep the 
central path in such a way that it is pushed up and is not allowed to fall down. All that is done through Mahalakshmi principle. Parabrahma Swarupi. She is the one who is Parabrahma. She is the one which is the all-pervading power. Because of that we have the knowledge. Because of the, that all-pervading power of God we get knowledge on our fingertips. So it acts through your brain as Mahamaya, through your nerves as Bodhas, and all around you, you get the information. So you become part and parcel of the whole cosmos and you become a very efficient, already programmed computer. She wears white dress. Whenever we have program, I wear white. Shweta Ambara Dhare Devi, she wears. That's the time I have to give realization, so I am Mahalakshmi. At the puja time, I am Mahakali. Or Adishat. Mahakali is Adishat. down to earth person. Jagat Sthite, down to earth, and she is the mother of the whole universe, of this world. So Mahalakshmi. Now the, these two others are that those who read these stotras, these mantras about Nirmala Sevi, and do it with complete dedication. They get all kinds of siddhis which are never lost. They get the kingdom of God forever. One who reads it once, it removes all your sins. Those who read it twice get into dhyana, into the samadhi state, only twice. If you read it three, three times, Anyone who is anti-God and troubling you gets destroyed. Okay. Did it try huh? Did it try yeah. You have done it already twice, huh? <laughs> so, the one who becomes Nirmala Devi means who cleanses out, becomes an auspicious person, becomes auspicious, Shubha, because she is the one, she gets uh, the sun. Huh? Huh. Over pleased. She is over pleased and that's how she gives you blessings and you become auspicious. Because you are clean in heart. There isn't any ego, there's no any conditioning. You have a very clean attention and clean heart. It's the same now, repeat, it's the Namaste Su Mahamaya Shri Pite Sura Pujyate Shankha Chakra Gada Haste Shri Nirmala Devi Namaste. It is a very, I should say, a precise scientific study. Even when you take names, you know, I am amazed at these people. Those who have written, 
I don't know how. Like it, me. Mantras in the puja. What a description. Start wondering what divine eyes they must have. I think at least your eyes should develop to that state where you see those mantras. If we don't have to create but see that reflection, if it is true or not. It looks very fantastic, but it's a fact. Some of the mantras really surprising how they know. I myself don't know how they found it out. But their discoveries show their depth, their love, their dedication and understanding what I am. Of course, at this stage I am a Mahamaya. Rather difficult, but still, try. Also intellectuals, you see, the so-called intellectuals, are the people, I think, who walk backwards. They can't see front. If you walk backwards, what do you say? The reality is going out from you, you back, back, backwards. It's very difficult to talk to them. They always try to find something that is very surprisingly funny to me. But those have the inner sight, they see it so precisely, so clearly. I mean, these were written long time past. Of course, this one is written by Adi Shankaracharya. But thousands of years back they have written things like Markandeya. He has described my knees. Can you imagine? He must have crawled up to my knees to see me also. <laughs> it's exactly the same. And here he says there are three folds. In fact, all the time I have three folds, which human beings don't have. One on here, another here, another here. I have to have the eyebrows this time. Everything. Surprising. They never saw me, I think, otherwise I didn't exist before as manifested on this earth. But they saw me, all right, especially Markandeya. Where you go to this, when you have been to the temple of Saptashringi. Saptashringi means which has got seven uh, peaks, peaks, peaks. English says, yeah, it's all right with me if I speak English, but translation I'm very bad. So the shikharas are the seven chakras, and that's the Adi Shakti. And the face is exactly like mine, with thousand eyes. And that is one temple is not yet spoiled, but this Mahalakshmi temple is spoiled. They get all the boots, not in front of her, but at the back. It's all. We'll have to remove that and we'll manage. It has nothing to do with a particular religion, particular thing. Is the inner understanding, is the inner awakening, the inner knowledge, which is the truth. Now one can say, why didn't Christ say? He did, in a way, he did. But just see where he was born, where there was no tradition, no understanding. He could not say all these things there, could he? Even in India, how many people understand? I ask so many people, why do you sing this song in the uh, temple of Mahalakshmi when it is the, you're talking about Ambe? They didn't know. Nobody knows. Even the ones who worship have been there in that temple, have been their forefathers and forefathers and forefathers. They don't know. They don't know. But at least they have the background. But what's the use of the background which you don't understand anything? Like a blind person, whether he stands next to the flowers or to a donkey, God knows. 
Now you are the ones who know. But still, still we have to see for ourselves. Many miracles, many things happen. You, I hope you see the photographs. Have they seen the photographs? All of you have seen? Have you seen the deity? No? Oh God, where is it coming? That's very convincing. All right, big. It's only falling on me all the time. So what is coming? I don't know. No, it's all right. I am all right. Don't fall on me, Father. Now there are photographs that have come out. I am sitting like this, and the cloth that separates the bride from the bridegrooms is just this. You see, all the deities sitting here are now. All of them. Then all the bridegrooms are blessed with light. And you see all the arrows which are described now, that she sends arrows of love. Because they are getting married, the Cupid sends his arrows. Then there are flowers, which are divine flowers for the bride. And the one who is holding also that antar part, that cloth, has got his Sri Chakra very clearly shown. And all of you are sitting, and top of you is the light. See the other way round. It's my name written in Arabic. Also, it looks like a little bit like your cardiogram. Everyone has light, everybody is a real life. You must see that. And then you will know your value, you will know your situation and you will know what you are. You are all realized souls. Not only realized souls, are yogis. You know all about chakras, you know how to raise the Kundalini, you know how to give realization. Such powerful people never lived on this earth, never existed, never known. You have entered into the kingdom of God. Not only that, but you are on the stage. Everybody is looking after you. You should see these photographs. You become convinced about it. These were taken by an ordinary student by this small camera you gave him as a present. He brought in. He said, "I can't understand what is all this." In this. Poor fellow was trying to see this way, that way. <laughs> you all should see it carefully. And then we'll enlarge and we'll send it over to people, all the centers must have. You've seen my photographs in the sky, you've seen the photographs of the vibrations on my house, that is that. But these are very remarkable photographs, are not? They should convince you of your power, of your greatness, that you are very different, special people, and you have to live like special people, not to be bowed down by useless things like, my wife is like this, my husband like this, my child like this. Who are your brothers and sisters? Yaneshwara said, they are all going to be related, so here he goes, they will all be related. Those who are, he will describe you as very, at a very superlative thing. They are the oceans, each one of them is the ocean, stalking ocean of, or speaking ocean of Amrosa. And they are the great forest of boon-giving uh, trees. That's you. He describes you like that. 
we never exaggerated. So he says, come along the forest, you all are the forest of moon giving trees. So, let's start one by one. Huh? Huh, also you see the angels. So first one with the deity. Huh. I am looking like a heart in the center and the rest of them are sitting behind me as deities. You can all have it together to see. Lots of us. This is the first one. All right. Now, here goes the second one, when you find the angels with their wings. Pass it on. Now, these are the arrows of love. Pass it on. <laughs> now, these are the blessings on the bridegrooms. Now here I look like a white picture and here are all the vibrations coming out from me. The white one is me. You must see the deities ones. You see one by one series you must see if you see it the other way round. Now here are the bright blessed by Divine Flowers. This is the Sri Chakra of the person who was holding that cloth. This is my name written on top of your head. If you see the other way around, you can see it. If you know Arabic. Everyone. I have always told you that the vibrations are like half comma or the moon of the first day. And you see me, a bundle of vibrations. Allah. Allah. But if you put it like this, it is my name. You see, this is Mir Mala and Allah otherwise. You see? Allah, if you see from this side and from this side is Mir Mala. All right? Allah is Virata. This is the one where Hanumana was sitting before me. I see all that, but you don't see, that's the trouble is. You have seen that photograph, I think, of Hanuman. These are the two names of one coin. 
One is Nirmala, the other is Allah. Also it is Nirmala and Sadashiva. Also it is Nirmala and Brahmadeva. So Allah is the same as Yehovah or what's called Yehovah? Yehovah. Pass it on to others to see. We'll have to make them big and we'll get them enlarged. Isn't it, Gavi? This one is missing where the bullock carts are. The Muslims must have some sense in their heads. <laughs> That's why it's in Arabic. They are the blindest, blindest people you could ever think of. Fanatic. This madman Khomeini. He was dying, still he's surviving. You should not feel happy when he's dying, let him die. Can I have them back? The ladies have seen? All of you pass it that side first. Of all. If somebody has not seen all these. Last but not the least. This is for all of you to understand that leadership is a myth. There's nobody like a leader in the kingdom of God. It's not that a leader will be allowed to go first inside, nothing of the kind. But the worst are the leaders' wives. They start thinking themselves to be leaders. They are the worst of all. Don't treat the wives of leaders as leaders. And they have no business to guide anyone or to tell anyone. Be very careful on that point. All such wives, I don't know where they'll end up. It's very common, those women, 
who have nothing in them try to bask in the glory of their husbands. You see, so many prime ministers are like that, their wives. We have so many of them we have had. Mrs. Kennedy we had, we had Mao Zedong's wife, we had uh, wife of uh, Chiang Kai-shek, uh, of this uh, Carlos, also of the, uh, what his name was? Uh, huh? I, I, I know. <laughs> Not me, not me. <laughs> you see, the wives of leaders must keep themselves as non-identity. Any woman who tries such things, you see, will harm the whole organization. Like people saying, Nancy Reagan rules her husband. Imagine shameful things she does. Ambao's wife ruined him. That's what they say. I mean, everywhere they talk about this kind of a thing. So no leader's wife is to be treated like a leader by any chance, not to be given any importance. And they are to be put down in their own places. First of all, they think they work very hard. God knows what work they do. They think no end of themselves. They have to work hard like all others. They are like all other women, they are not to have any special position. That's the sign of a real surgery. You'll be amazed, though I am Adi Shakti, I never, never go into my husband's office, never, never telephone to him, never use anyone from his office, nor do I telephone to any one of his people, whatever may be the difficulty whether I have Sahaja Yoga or not, and this I did all my life. I never preach Sahaja Yoga in anyone else's his office. Anybody from his office, I said, keep out. They are not allowed in Sahaja Yoga till my husband is working. And if I telephone to him, he thinks I must have met with an accident. He gets so upset. But to bask in the glory of father or husband is a sign of a woman who doesn't have any person. She must be a useless woman, absolutely. Show no special respect for such women. They must stand in their own dignity like all other Sajoginis are. They have no business to take any decision as wives of the leader. They have to be humble, intelligent, they have to work hard. I have to do a lot of work for my husband. I cook for his friends, and I, I clean his ships, I do such a lot of things I have done for him. I have decorated his ships, whatever type of things work he has done. I have to feed his uh, club and his chaprasis, his peons, everything, I have done lots of things. But never, never once I ask. I have to bring presents for his secretaries, for his other people. On a, I think before Christmas I have to give them presents to all of them. All kinds of things I do. But never, never ask the driver even to bring the car or even to bring the medicine or even to bring the letter which has arrived. That should be attitude. That's the sign of your dignity. You are not here because you are somebody's wife. You are here because you are a Sajogi and a Sajogi. All these complications come because your attention is more on the husband or the wife, not on me. And you don't love me. Enough. If you love me, you will know me very well. Like the people who have known me, they only love me. And I, I don't gain anything out of your love. You have to gain something by loving. This is the last message I give you. 
horrible things I have seen happening to leaders and to different ashrams and different cities and different countries because the wife is a negative woman and always negativity goes through the wife. Always you'll find politicians attack through their children, through their wives, through somebody else. And the leaders must put them down in their own place. You must have seen when my daughter's daughter came, I asked her to come on the stage, she would not. She sat in one corner, she would not. I had to tell her at least come in front, she would not. Always the wives are more susceptible, vulnerable to negativity, so they have to be extremely careful. They should not take any decisions. I've seen if there are miserly wives, horrid they are, horrid. The leaders are there because of their own position, not because of their wives by any chance. In this I am Muslim, I think. If it's a lady who is the leader, she should not look at her husband's face all the time, what he has to say. She should behave like a leader and should not place her husband beyond a certain point. He doesn't matter in such a way. All right? I hope you understand. The women are the power behind the man, and they are not the manifestation of the power of their husbands. They have to give power to their husband and not to use his powers for their own use sign of person who is very low level and has no self-respect. There are many subtle ways by they assert themselves. So be very, very careful, very, very careful. All the Sahaja Yogis must also remember that your husbands or wives should not guide you in Sahaja. Another point is that in the name of love you go on hugging each other. Please don't do it. The Kundalini gets affected. Kissing each other. Please don't do it. It's all right. Men can hug men, women can hug women. But not too much of it also not so good. Maybe a bhut does that more because she wants to pass her bhuts into your body. Better to keep out. But the kissing business must be stopped immediately. I mean, this French style kissing everybody is horrid. You get a shock, you know. Every time you meet a Frenchman, you don't know where he's going to kiss. <laughs> These are our private things, of whom to kiss, whom not to kiss. How can we be exposed to every person like that? Even children should not be kissed much. And if you have to kiss, kiss on their hands or on their heads. Then in the name of affection, love and compassion, we go to booths. Now somebody is sick with heavy AIDS. You have nothing to do with that person. Anybody who is sick, you don't have to do anything with that sick person. Give my photograph, I'll look after you. You don't have to go and cure somebody who is sick because you have compassion. You don't have more compassion than I have. And I don't believe in small families of husband, wife and one and a half child. I believe, and you should also believe, which is the truth, in the larger family, the big family, where we are all part and parcel children of one mother. So don't waste your energy on your family business. You'll never grow. First, you didn't believe in family didn't believe in your children. Now you believe too much in your family, too much in your children. Just the same, but difference does it mean. Whether you are in the pitcher or in the river, it's just the same. We are in the water, isn't it? So 
So we don't believe in this kind of a small family affairs, my wife, my son, my this. These limitations must be broken and you must think yourself to be a Sahaja first and last. Of course, by the way, you have a husband, by the way, you have a wife, by the way, you have children. But they shouldn't form a major part of your life. Your spirit is the major part and the only part that you have. The rest of it is just by the way. If they are realized souls, if they are Sahaja Yogis, all right, they are with you. Now the last of the last, that when girls come from India, you don't think they are all goddesses. Don't pamper them. Don't tell them that they are great. You look very beautiful. You see, one girl came to Italy and all the people said, you are a classical beauty. Can you imagine? This classical beauty could not get married for thirty-eight years. And she really believed it, she was classical beauty. I don't know what she thought of herself. And ultimately she became mad, she made her husband mad. So don't treat them like goddesses. They are Indians. So what? They are just like you. Nothing so special. But when they come here, you try to pamper them, give them presents, look after them, then they become naughty, they become rude, and then you become unhappy. Treat them just like any other woman. Especially women, they lose their heads very fast. In India they are not treated like that once they are married. And big, big problems you have caused me. There's one lady who came to France, we made such an idol out of her, now I don't know what to do with her, because they don't, the husband doesn't want her, the father can't look after her. Another one came to Switzerland, another horrid one. And they know how to handle you now, they know how to frighten you, keep them down. I'm, al you, I'm allowing you even to give them two slaps, if they misbehave. Because they come from India, they don't become something great. They are human beings, you are human beings. They are Sahaja Yogis, you are Sahaja Yogis. Don't spoil their heads. Don't give them special treatment. They are just like all other Sahaja Yogis. It's very surprising. It has caused me so much of trouble. Some of them are quite negative, left-sided. Be careful. Very left-sided, and some of them are very right-sided too. So it's not proper also that we have to leave them alone and then it's a bad name for us in Sahaja. Treat them just like ordinary people. And immediately they start showing off, you let me know. This is very important. There are some very sensible women from India. I would say Chaya is the one who had come here, raises his wife. She's very, very sensible. Yes, we have some very sensible, very very matured women, but also stupid. Some of them had no background, they come from very poor families sometimes. Sometimes they come from families where they have suffered a lot, and then suddenly their heads go off. So be careful. Some of them from rich families, so their heads are off. Keep, to, keep them into balance. I think you have some problem there? Why suddenly operate about